Also something happening today. Syrian forces on high alert preparing for a possible strike from the U.S. in retaliation for chemical attacks on its citizens. The West now vowing to come together to demand that Assad finally be forced to destroy his chemical weapons stockpile. So what happens next? Here now to weigh in is the former deputy commanding general of U.S. forces in Afghanistan and author of Direct Fire, General Anthony Tata. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Heather. So what do you foresee happening today? Well, I think what's happening right now, Heather, is that we've got uh, all the elements of national power being synchronized by this administration, which uh, they have been very good at in the past in other geopolitical uh, crises and situations. And so we have diplomatic power. They've proposed a U.N. resolution, of course, which Russia vetoed, used its veto power for the 12th time in relation to Syria to veto uh, a resolution uh, in the United Nations. Uh, you've got uh, nation uh, coalition building going on with uh, uh, France and uh, United Kingdom and uh, the, the Saudi Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and, and other nations that are going to come to play here uh, to bring power, military power to bear. Uh, you have information wars going on. You have the Russian uh, uh, prime minister, uh, a foreign uh, minister for defense, mm -hmm. uh, saying that um, they're going to shoot down U.S. airplanes. So, um, uh, you know, it is uh, brinksmanship at its highest. And so what we're doing is marshaling the forces. Mm -hmm. and, and Russia and Syria are um, actually um, talking about uh, fighting back. So we have the USS uh, Harry Truman um, strike group headed that way today. Now, that was something that was previously scheduled, correct? That is correct. It entered the Med yesterday as, uh, um, you know, that's part of our information war, mm -hmm. as uh, was put out through the media. And that gives us uh, uh, two carrier strike groups in, in the region that can uh, provide uh, military aircraft. And we have also air bases all around Europe that can provide uh, B-1, B-2 bombers, whatever we need, uh, and have the capability to evade radar. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, you've got to get past the radars. You've got to uh, target the chemical stuff. Stockpiles, and I would continue you have to target the uh, delivery means, which is the Air Force, the helicopters, and the artillery tubes, and their crews as well. You know, you look at these pictures of these little children that we have on right now that uh, were injured in all this, their families suffocating inside of their homes, images that we've seen before. Uh, Euro control on Tuesday, they actually warned about this possible possibility of this missile strike within 72 hours. Is that something that you that you think would be a sign that missile strikes are going to occur today? Uh, absolutely. The deconfliction of airspace is uh, one of the things that you really have a moral responsibility to do because there's a lot of civilian air airliner traffic that crosses uh, some of these areas. And uh, if we do not uh, you know, work in concert with our allies to put out uh, the, the information, then, of course, we could have needless casualties. And so uh, this is part of that diplomatic piece that's happening up front, mm -hmm. Heather, where we are cleaning up uh, the battlefield so that uh, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines can do whatever is necessary. And, and I, I might remind everybody that our national security strategy calls for the prohibition of of chemical weapons, of weapons of mass destruction, and a an, an international order based on the rule of law. These are two things that are fundamental and have been for decades in our national security strategy. So we we must do something. And and there's an eleventh hour gambit by the Russians to try to verify uh, what actually happened there. Syria, of course, and Russia, of course, say there was no chemical strike. And so right. there's a UN organization that they're trying to bring in at the eleventh hour to forestall uh, any kind of military action. And, and I think that's going to be the last uh, piece there before something happens either tonight or tomorrow yeah, night. People calling for a different response, though, from President Trump than we got from President Obama, because obviously we remember with President Obama back in 2015, he said that we got all of the chemical weapons uh, dependent on Russia to do that. But clearly that did not happen because we have what's happening uh, today. Uh, yeah, thank you. Go ahead. So, Heather, what I would say is that uh, Obama, actually, if you want a Russian collusion story, uh, this is it, because what he did is he turned his back on those children and women that you mentioned running through the uh, street with their n nose and ears bleeding uh, from the chemical attacks, and he turned it over to the Russians, who have been a longtime uh, supporter of Syria, because that's where they have a military base, their naval base, warm water naval base, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and they ignored the fact 
fact that there's collusion between Russia and Syria, and, and Obama turned his back on, on the people of Syria and allowed Russia to, with a wink and a nod, say, yeah, they're all gone, and right. clearly they're not. And, and so this, this is blood on Obama's hands, in my opinion. Yeah, and Assad's own security guards leading them around, trying to show them that everything was gone. So what do you think is going to happen there? Uh, General Tata, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it.